The Edmund Fitzgerald models by Boats 1200 are highly detailed, handcrafted, museum quality models. To build each one from the ground up would be impractical from a time and labor standpoint. For this reason, a molding and casting technique is employed to build the models in a reasonable amount of time and ensuring each one is exactly like the original. The resin parts are cast from molds made from an original master model. Over 150 hours went into the research and construction of the original master model. By using the actual blueprints of the ship, accurate dimensions and correct hull lines were achieved. At 100 feet of real ship to every inch of model, some details like railings or hatch cover clamps are best left out, but the details that are included are as close to true as possible. The master was built from materials like wood, plastic, wire, clay, and just about anything else that fit the need. It was built in components that could easily be molded and cast, then painted and assembled. In effect, I built my own ship model kit. Molding and casting is a complex set of procedures, but essentially consists of making a flexible mold of whatever parts you wish to clone, and then pouring a liquid plastic into the mold to create the duplicates. The mold rubber consists of equal amounts of a part A and a part B, which are carefully measured out, poured into a cup, and mixed extremely thoroughly, then the cup with the mold rubber is placed into a vacuum chamber where we place a lid on it, turn on a vacuum pump, and draw down that atmosphere inside that chamber to about negative 29 inches of mercury. This is allowing all the air bubbles suspended in that mold rubber to degas and escape out. We need to remove all the air bubbles from the mold rubber, otherwise when we cast the resin parts they'll have tiny dimples on them where the bubbles were. It then collapses like a souffle, we know we're done, we can turn off the pump, Open the valve, repressurize to normal air pressure. Remove the lid. That mold rubber is now virtually bubble free and it's ready to be poured into the mold box and over our master. We start at one corner and allow the mold rubber to work its way to the other end, slowly pushing any air around the part away. This helps us get a perfect mold. Then once we've poured all the mold rubber into the box, we put the mold box into our pressure pot, which is going to crush any remaining air bubbles that might be suspended in that silicone or between the part and the silicone. Put that lid on, clamp it down, pump it up to about 70 pounds per square inch. And this will make an absolutely perfect mold. There will be no air bubbles and six hours later it's cured. We release all the air pressure from in the pot. Once it's equalized we can undo the clamps, remove the lid, and that mold box with our brand new mold is ready to be pulled out. And we can pull away the mold box sides and remove the masters from the mold. The masters were sprayed with a silicone release agent prior to pouring the rubber on them so it pulls out fairly easily. We take a look at the master, make sure that it's in good shape, that nothing was left in the mold, and we put it away for the next time we need to make another mold because unfortunately the molds don't last forever, they wear out. So we keep the masters so we can always have another copy ready to go. Now that we have our molds, it's time to start making parts. Like the mold rubber, the liquid resin comes in a part A and a part B, which get measured out in a one-to-one -one ratio and thoroughly mixed together. This has a pot life of about seven minutes, so we work carefully but quickly. And after filling the molds, they are placed in the pressure pot, allowed to cure at 70 PSI. This eliminates any tiny air bubbles that may still be suspended in the liquid resin, as well as forcing the resin into every nook and cranny of that mold, giving us a flawless part nearly every time.
After the parts are cured, I depressurize and remove them from the pot. Demold them, clean up any possible mold flashing that may exist, as well as inspect for possible imperfections. Aside from creating the original master model, the painting is by far the most time-consuming part of this build. 18 different colors of enamel and acrylic paints are employed in bringing these models to life. The process begins with a spray coat of primer. Then, airbrushes are used to spray cabin and deck colors, as well as clear coat lacquer at various stages to help seal and protect layers of paint. But most importantly, all the tiny details on these models, they're all hand painted with a 5-0 brush. This is truly the most laborious part of the process as accuracy is paramount to achieving a quality model. Of course, when multiple models are built simultaneously, efficiency does increase. Custom made water slide decals really add a finishing touch and some added value to these models. There are no less than 13 of them on the Edmund Fitzgerald. Custom printed on a computer and each one of course applied by hand. The front windows and back windows of the pilot house are decals as well as the name which appears in six places on the boat and the rear windows to the after cabin. In this video, the rear windows to the deck below the pilot house are being applied. After about 10 seconds in water, the decal releases from its paper backing and can be slid roughly into place on the part. Here a toothpick is being used to make fine adjustments to the final location of the decal where after an application of a special setting solution, the decal will be allowed to air dry, become permanently affixed to the part, and eventually when the model is completed, a final spray of dull coat lacquer will seal the decal in. Another great feature of a Boats 1200 Edmund Fitzgerald model is the option of a base. Nearly all other models from other manufacturers in this scale are waterline only. Because I offer a full hull version of the model, I wanted to go a step further and offer a museum quality base to go along with that model. Because I make these bases right here in my own shop, not only do I offer the customer the ability to safely handle the model without ever touching the boat itself, but they get to choose their own stain color too further customizing their purchase. The process begins by cutting blanks from a half inch thick sheet of poplar. They are then edge routed for a more finished profile and then sanded. With the use of a jig, registration holes are drilled for the clear acrylic pedestals that the full hull version sits on. Once an order is received, the base is stained to the customer's specification and finally given two coats of clear spray to provide years of protection. I personally sign each base as well because I believe artwork should be signed. The nameplate is finally affixed and the model is then epoxied onto the base. It's now ready for packaging. Due to the extremely delicate nature of these models, special precautions had to be taken in order to get them shipped safely. The models are secured to a heavy stock paper with twist ties and then slid into a protective box. That box is then placed into a larger box with a paper packing around it. And now another Boats 1200 model is ready to make its journey to its new lucky owner. For more information or to order your model today, go to www.calsworld.net.